teach the mechanics and there's four things that we try to teach in our mechanics. Two of them are upper body and two of them are lower body. Like a golf coach, we'll always try to teach your mechanics without you necessarily knowing that we're teaching your mechanics, i.e. we never want to paralyze the quarterback where his arm speed or whatever becomes slowed down where we paralyze him where he's not playing as fast as he can possibly play. Upper body, there's two things that we'll talk about. One, having good arm speed. You have to have good arm speed in your upper body motion to have a quick release, to have a strong arm, to have good velocity, to have a good delivery. Also, you have to have a tight circle. The tighter your circle is, and we'll get into that, the tighter your circle is, or the faster the ball goes straight up into that circle, the quicker your release will be. The quicker your release is, the more accurate you will be as a quarterback. Lower body, we talk a lot about short step, no step throws. A lot of quarterbacks are very good in seven on seven. A lot of quarterbacks are very good in seven on seven, but all of a sudden, you get three techniques rushing and the pocket's not quite as clean and they're not quite as good. So short step, no step throws are quarterbacks who can throw the ball without taking much of a step. And also we'll talk about having no vertical bounce. No vertical bounce in your drop when you're in the pocket. Football players always, in my opinion, have at least one foot on the ground. You never want to be in the air. You never want to be in the air when you play any position in quarterback. So this tape will be ways to drill those four things, two being upper body, two being lower body. And here we go. The first drill that we'll talk about is a long toss drill, and it's a drill that we do to really warm up. The quarterback will set just outside the numbers, just outside the numbers with the base a little wider than he thinks is comfortable. Basically, we say get your belly pointed towards your target. Get your belly pointed towards your target. And Henry could really have wider feet right here, have a wider base. Jim could really have this foot up a little bit more. But as long as your belly is facing towards your target, as long as your belly is facing towards your target, you just want to no step throw this ball. Now, you're about 40 yards away if you're splitting the numbers in the sideline or outside those numbers. And what you want to do is turn this ball over. You want to turn it over. So as Henry throws this ball, if Henry's right here and the other quarterback's right there, you want the ball to go up and then turn it over like a punt. Come down with that point coming down. So the ball wants to start going up like that, at the top be like that, and then at the bottom with the point coming down as it drops in there. You could have her, this is a rainbow pass. This is a rainbow pass. Now as you see Jim right here, you almost want to fall forward as you do this. You can drag that back foot. You should almost fall on your face as you do this sucker. And this is the touch up and down throw. There's gonna be a lot of times in a game there's going to be a lot of times in a game where you're not going to get to step. You're not going to get to step. You're going to have just a short step, as Jim has with his left foot right here. Put it on the ground and get that throw up and down. Anytime that you're throwing that dancer route, you want that point of that ball coming down at your receiver. That's a great back shoulder throw right here for Jim. He's throwing it right at the receiver's back shoulder, a nice firm ball, but it's still turning over a little bit and the receiver can adjust to it. Short step, no step throws. Here's Shane Matthews in the pocket right now. Bam, sets with a good base. That left foot, watch his left foot right now. As soon as he sets, he sets with a good base and then he never has to separate his feet again. Play with your ankles apart, Play with your ankles apart, and he short step, no step throws it. Pick that left foot up and down. Pick that left foot up and down, and then get a ball out there for the receiver, dropping it there in there. This throw right here is like in the long toss. It just takes a short step with that left foot, short step with that left foot, and then drops it in there. We don't throw dancers or fades or anything like that to a certain spot. We throw them to a person. This is a great picture of Jim dropping back right here. Bam! He sets with a good base. He sets with a good base. He never sets with his feet together, so then he never has to separate his feet. He sets with a good base and always has at least one foot on the ground. This is the long toss. 
short step, no step throw. Watch his left foot, nothing else. His left foot is a short step, no step throw, and all you do is point your belly towards your target. Point your belly towards your target and turn that ball over. And turn that ball over. Right here, that ball should be coming down point first. You just have to practice throwing this ball without stepping without stepping. If Jim were to take a crow hop right here or climb the pocket, he would never complete this ball. You have to have a great deal of confidence throwing without stepping. He's not throwing it to a spot, he's throwing it to a person, to a person. Now, to complement always having your feet on the ground, always having your feet on the ground, we do something that's called a line drill. Now, you'll never hear us say to a quarterback, okay, push for depth, push for depth in your drop. If you're ever in the NFL or big time college, you should be tall enough that if you take five steps, you'll be deep enough. Three steps, you'll be deep enough. Seven steps, you'll be deep enough away from the line of scrimmage. So we talk about always having your feet on the ground. Jim, as he's dropping right here, will never have two feet off the ground. His feet are making brrrr, piston, piston-like motions. We talk about a drum roll. Pound your feet. Brrr, 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 brrr. Take quick, short steps, always having your feet on the ground. Always having your feet under your shoulders and your shoulders over your feet is the mantra that we say. Your feet under your shoulders and your shoulders over your, and your, shoulders over your feet. Never be in a position, never be in a position that you can't throw a ball in an instant, in an instant, in an instant. So you never want your shoulders too steep, leaning back, and you never want your shoulders too steep, leaning forward take short steps. You still want to cross over. You still want to cross over as you throw it. You still want to cross over. Now, you shouldn't come off the ground like this with your back foot. You should never be on one foot like that as you deliver a ball. Have a heavy back foot is language that we're going to use a ton. That's, that's not very good lower body. That's not very good lower body. Drag that back foot. Drag that back foot. Look at Jim here again. Okay, this is Jim again. Now, watch how fast he gets his left foot on the ground. The key to short step, no step throws is when the, when the guy calls for the ball right here, when the guy calls for the ball right, when Henry calls for the ball right here, Jim's left foot gets on the ground in an instant. Here's a big guy who we're not focusing on upper body or anything right here. We're just focusing on having fast feet, on having fast feet and your feet always being on the ground having one foot on the ground. You don't ever want to have vertical bounce whenever you're doing this drill. You don't want to be bouncing up in the air. You want your shoulders to be relatively parallel to the line, to the ground the entire time you're doing it. Jim will be a little bit off balance sometimes. It's not perfect, you know, but this drill is to eliminate vertical bounce and have quick, quick, quick feet on the ground. Quick feet on the ground. It's fast. Henry right here, you want quick feet on the ground, quick feet on the ground, just don't drag, just drag that back foot. Don't get caught up on one foot like this. Drag that back foot. Let this run through with Henry. Okay, now the directional line drill. Again, the theme is have two feet on the ground, no vertical bounce, and from whatever position you're in, be ready to come to balance quickly. Always have your feet under your shoulders and your shoulders over your feet. Come to balance quickly. So now Jim starts off dropping like he's right-handed. Henry can then point him to a back pedal or point him to dropping back like he's left-handed. But no matter what the situation, when Henry claps for the ball, Jim should come to balance. Jim should come to balance. Right here, you'll see as Jim's dropping back, while his body has a little bit of a tilt, his shoulders are still relatively parallel. Some quarterbacks you'll see will get too severe like this as they drop back. They'll get too severe, and then when they ultimately set, concordly, they have to, or con I don't even know if that's a word, consequently, they have to assume that same position the other way. The less tilt you get, the less tilt you have to finish with, and the wider your base will be whenever you set. The whole mantra here is keeping your feet under your shoulders, your shoulders over your feet, and your feet are always on the ground. Here's a big man right here who led the NFL with the fewest number of sacks because he can get rid of the ball from unusual positions. His feet snap to the ground quickly. 
He never has both feet off the ground. Henry right here, who's an explosive athlete, has too much vertical bounce probably sometimes. Too much vertical bounce. Not bad with his shoulders. His problem is you don't want to finish with one leg coming off the ground. Have a heavy back foot. Have a heavy back foot. This is not karaoke. The other quarterback is just, or the, the, the coach or the other quarterback is directing him. This is just for this so you see him doing it right here. The other guy is directing him and then he'll clap for the ball, okay? Just watch the coach right here so you can see the, the drill. It's non-rhythmic. It's non-rhythmic. The quarterback, as he drops back, doesn't want to anticipate having to throw the ball, but rather react to it, come to balance in an instant come to balance in an instant. We do it up and down. The line drill and the long toss are the first two things that we do so the quarterback can get loose. First two things that we do so the quarterback can get loose. Here you see Jim has a sense of urgency to get his feet back on the ground and come to balance. Get his feet back on the ground and come to balance. Whatever position you're in, you have to be ready to come to balance in an instant. In an instant and deliver the ball. That's why you can't have much vertical bounce. You can't jump up in the air. Okay, in terms of job justification, you see it here some. Here Jim runs a chilly roll play right here, and he just, he rolls back that way, but then sets in the pocket, has to come to balance in an instant. Come to balance in an instant. The quarterback, a lot of times in the pocket, can get himself in some unusual positions. Now my argument with Jim here would be he could still, bam, don't ever click your heels. Don't ever click your heels like this. As he sets, he probably sets with too severe of a tilt right there. And the more severe that tilt, the tighter your base will be. And then right there, he has to click his heels together. And if he ever had a rush or a three technique rushing him hard right there, he'd never be able to complete this pass. The only reason he can is because he's so well protected. That's not a position of right there not a great position of having your shoulders over your feet or your feet under your shoulders. And therefore, he's got to click his heels where he didn't have to previously on that dancer. Okay, here's a roll to the left. Again, it's not perfect, but as Jim pops his feet right here, job justification on the line drill, so you move. Bam, you've got to throw the ball accurately from a lot of unusual positions if you play quarterback in the NFL, this being one of them. You've got to throw the ball from a lot of unusual positions in the NFL, this being one. Jim doesn't have a great pop right here. You'll see one that's better. Not a great pop right here, but Jim always has, usually has, his shoulders over his feet and his feet under his shoulders. Here's a better picture of Jim popping his shoulders, not having much vertical bounce. His shoulders never go up in the air. His feet are always on the ground. He has a sense of urgency, as you can see right here, to get his feet on the ground, not much vertical bounce and then he short step, no step, throws it. Okay, line drill with the pump. It's the same drill, but the quarterbacks then work when he claps, the quarterback can then practice pumping the ball. Now, our coaching points with pumps vary, but ultimately, the decision to pump is based on techniques that we see, blah, blah, blah. But whenever you pump the ball, the issue isn't the pump. The issue is completing the pass. What Jim's doing right here is usually enough to move a defender or to freeze a defender or to paralyze a defender. But the trick with guys that pump too much then 
can never come to balance. You can pump so much, you can pump so much that then all of a sudden whenever you do reset your feet, you're in a bad position to throw the ball and you can't throw a completion. So right now as he claps for the ball, the quarterback may practice pumping it. Henry could do a little bit better pump right here, but we say don't blow it with your left shoulder. Don't have your left shoulder and elbow go so far. You can take your left hand off the ball, as we'll see some here, but don't let it go so far. Don't let it go so far that you can't reload. The issue in pumping is reloading so you can complete the pass. Now when we do it, sometimes the quarterback will pump it. Sometimes he can throw it. He could pump bounce back and then throw it, but the whole drill is to mix in pumps with throwing the ball where you got to come back to balance. You got to come back to balance. It's good for conditioning and we often progress. We'll do it three times. We'll start with long toss, then we'll do the line drill where you just drop back right-handed, then we'll do the line drill with twisting back and forth, and then we'll do the line drill with pumps. So everybody will do it three times. Sometimes we do it at the end of practice too for conditioning. As you can see right here, Henry's an explosive athlete, but playing quarterback, you gotta be remarkably coordinated where your feet are always over your shoulders and under your shoulders and your shoulders over your feet. You can get catawampus as a quarterback. Here's Jim. The measurables may say he's not an explosive athlete, but his feet are always over under his shoulders and his shoulders are always over his feet and he can no step throw it. Is that a perfect motion? I don't know, it is if you've got a three technique breathing right down your throat. I know here's a guy who's in the worst position possible to throw a ball and in an instant that ball is gone. In an instant that ball is gone. He's got a great deal of confidence. Lower body, he sets with a good base. He doesn't even have to step with that left foot. Pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down. Arm speed up top, he's got good arm speed, that's natural, he wouldn't be in the NFL if he didn't. And his circle is tight. What's the circle? We'll start talking about that in a little bit, but it's as soon as that ball goes straight up in the air. Don't lead with your elbow. Don't lead with your elbow. Jim is a very coordinated athlete. Jim's got a very good center of gravity, one might say. Henry, while an explosive athlete, doesn't have the same center of gravity, has more vertical bounce. The measurables on a guy like Henry would say, here's a great athlete. He can fly, he can run really fast, and he can do all those things. He doesn't have the same center of gravity. Here's some pumps with Jim right now. The issue isn't the pump, the issue is the pass. So Jim pumps right here, but then comes to balance. Comes to balance with a very good base. Now if you think that you get this crow hop in the NFL and get to throw the ball, think again. Think again. That's how you get to stand and throw the football in the NFL. You better come to balance as a quarterback with a good base, as Jim is right here, and short step, no step, throw these. Anytime you set to throw, you better have a decent base because you get, that's how you got to throw it. Picture your base as this. If you want to use the analogy, you would have a good base, just as Tiger Woods would assume a position on the first tee. You would never, you would never drive a, a, a ball off the first tee with a narrow base. Jim here pumps, pumps the corner, but the pump isn't the issue. What he does right there is just enough to move the corner. That's enough. He keeps his left shoulder tight. The issue is coming to balance and completing the pass. Remember, a pump is for not if you pump it and throw an incompletion. I can pump the ball and throw an incompletion. We need guys that pump the ball and then throw completions. Right here. Shane pumps it panics a little bit, panics a little bit, doesn't keep his poise, but he does keep his base. But he does keep his base and delivers a short step, no step throw to the next guy in the progression. Okay, board drill. Again, this is a drill now. This is a drill to keep a good base, to keep a good base. Now, we've got these low boards back here. We've got these low boards back here, and the quarterback takes seven steps. 
The ball is set 10 yards away in the, uh, from the top of the boards. If the quarterback takes seven steps from there, he should be right in the middle of the boards. Right in the middle of the boards. There's somebody directing him to go right or go to the left, and then he steps over the boards. As he steps over the boards, he never wants, he never wants to get two feet off the ground at any one time. Jim right here goes one foot, two foot. One foot, two foot and then drag your back foot as you climb the pocket. So right now, Jim, lead with your back foot, because if you lead with your back foot, then your next step could be right on the ground in an instant. If you lead with your front foot, then you gotta take three steps to throw the football. But this right here will prevent quarterbacks from having vertical bounce. You want your eyes downfield, you want your eyes downfield, right here, they can just peek as they're dropping back to make sure they get in between the things but right now your eyes are downfield and you want to have a good posture where you gain comfort just stepping over guys a lot of times in the pocket when you have crap around your feet when you have crap around your feet it's natural then to look down well there's still stuff going on down the field so who cares if you step I don't care if you step on the boards that's why we got these low ones so even if you step on the boards that's fine Henry does a nice job of leading with his back foot of leading with his back foot as he steps over but don't look down if you step on him feel the rush feel the things around you don't look down now here's the most important point okay as you back as you step over these, whether it's going backwards or whether it's going forwards, you have to keep this base. It's natural to run, whether backwards or forwards, with your knees and ankles together. With your knees and ankles together. As a quarterback, you always want to play with your ankles apart. With your ankles apart. Try to, in drills, have a wider base than is normal, than you feel comfortable with. Jim right here has a little wider base than he might feel comfortable with. Why? Because he's doing the drill work. That's actually pretty good. That's actually about perfect, and Jim is like that in the game. No vertical bounce. He's stepping over him, not hopping. There's no vertical bounce. There's no vertical bounce. His eyes are downfield, and then as he climbs the pocket, he's not clicking his heels ever. That's the closest his feet ever get up together. You're fighting like heck as a quarterback to keep your ankles apart because you have to short step, no step throw. Short step, no step throw. Henry, as he drops back, there's a quick, quick peek just to make sure you're in the drill or you're in the boards. And then fight, fight to step over those boards. Don't jump. Fight to step over. See if Henry ever has two feet off the ground. No, that's pretty good right there. Fight to step over the boards with your eyes downfield. Step over the boards with your eyes downfield. Leading with your back foot. Now, as you climb the pocket twice right here, don't get your ankles too close. The closer your ankles are, the longer that left foot will be off the ground. The longer that left foot's off the ground, the more likely you are to get a concussion because somebody will kill you. Jim, a little too much vertical bounce right there. Too much. Too, don't have two feet off the ground. Widen that base. Keep it wide. Keep it wide. Keep it wide. This, as much as anything, makes the quarterback very conscious of having a good base. Good picture by Henry. Except for right there, he gets a little too close. Therefore, his left foot doesn't get down as fast as it can. That's it. That's it. Good picture by Jimmy. Whoa, too much vertical bounce right there. That's really bad. Really bad. Really bad. Really bad. Better. You don't want to machine gun your feet inside each one. Shane right here. This is really bad. Really a bad picture. Don't be in a hurry to go through the back, the, the, the boards. Don't be in a hurry. You just want to be conscious of having a wide base. In too great of a hurry as he goes through right here. Way too great of a hurry. We're talking about having a good base. Good base, short step, no step throws. Short step, no step throws are what we want. Shane's in too great of a hurry going through them right here. Whoa, as bad as it gets right there. You never want to be, in my opinion, a quarterback caught in that position. I could knock you over and I weigh 110 pounds. 
I could knock you over. But besides that, a guy could be open and you can't throw the ball until your feet get back on the ground. Get back on the ground. No vertical bounce. Wide base, no vertical bounce. Wide base, no vertical bounce. Short step, no step throws, no vertical bounce. Whenever you set in the pocket, just remember, seven on seven, you can take all the crow hops you want. Do I, you get a pass rush, you don't always get to step. So you better be ready to throw that ball from some unusual angles with your eyes downfield. With your eyes downfield. The key is feeling the rush. If you got things happening around you, that doesn't mean you take your eyes off of downfield. Don't take your eyes off downfield. Things happening all around you? Keep your eyes downfield. You may slide in the pocket, you may move in the pocket to the safe spot, but he's not watching the rush right here. He's just sliding to a safe spot in a two-man rush. It's the end of the game. Eyes downfield. Vertical, no vertical bounce. Not a good decision to throw it, but being in the pocket, you got to find safe spots. Find safe spots. See, drifting, he's not drifting. He's just moving to a safe spot in the pocket. Safe spot in the pocket. As you slide around, not a good decision, obviously, but as you move around in the pocket, as you move around some in the pocket, move around keeping your eyes downfield, and that's what we try to do with the board drill. Some of his other things go to crap here. You know, poor decision. It, you know, he didn't keep a tight base, but keep your eyes down the field. Keep your eyes down the field. No matter what's coming, keep your eyes down the field and your base wide. That's what the board drill does. Short step, no step throws, wide base, short step, no step throws, wide base, and your eyes downfield whenever crap is happening around you, because it will be happening. Okay, blue bag drill. This is another drill to really keep that base wide. Get a little wider base than you think is comfortable. These are tall boy bags right here. The quarterback's here, there's a coach right here, and receiver's five yards away from. Get a good posture, put the ball right on that right peck right there, and slide with a good base. This obviously forces you to keep your feet apart. And then when the guy pointing you, when the guy pointing claps, Put your left foot on the ground and deliver the ball. If you're a little catawampus, if you're off balance, so be it. Just deliver it. Remember, the issue is to get the ball out of your hand and complete the pass. Complete the pass. So we practice throwing a lot of times from unusual positions. Now, the trick on this drill is, we'll see from the other angle, you want to have a good base. You want to have a good base. And when the clap comes, you want to get that left foot on the ground, and no matter how you are, you want to develop throwing that ball with a great deal of confidence. You want to develop throwing that ball with a great deal of confidence. Now, the hard thing is you want your shoulders over your feet and your feet over your shoulders. That's what you want. You've got to have your feet over your shoulders and your shoulders over your feet. So you've got to take short steps. Always leading with your back foot, but short, 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 short steps. Short steps. Jim is working to do it, is working to do it, you can always be a little bit better, but it's good to watch film with guys on this drill. You want your shoulders over your feet, and then when you clap, just get the ball out. Put, put that left foot on the ground and somehow deliver it. Here's the least sack guy in the NFL. The least sack guy in the NFL right here, and he ran for minus 12 yards. He has confidence completing the ball from unusual angles because he practices it a ton.
shoulders, under your shoulders and your shoulders over your feet. Get that left foot on the ground, have confidence throwing the ball from a catawampus position. This is actually very hard for the quarterbacks. I mean, this is a conditioning drill right here. They'll be tired. It's a good drill to do at the end of practice. Right here, you want to fight ever getting too much like that or ever getting too much like that. In this drill, you want to remain as much with the center of gravity as, as good as you can. There's four blue bags lined up right there. Keep your feet under your shoulders, your shoulders over your feet, and then deliver the ball. Here's a picture of what not to do. You don't ever want to get too much like that. Never get too much like that or too much like that. This is Jim Early. This is Jim Early compared to Jim Late. And then come to balance and throw the ball. We're not throwing it off the run right here. This is what not to do. Don't get too much like that. Try to keep your shoulders over your feet and your feet over your shoulders. Shane, take small steps, shorter steps, shorter steps. The longer your steps, the longer your steps, the more your body's going to become catawampus. You've got to be in a position where you can come, you can come to balance in an instant. Now this guy can still come to balance in an instant, but you want to have short, choppy steps in the pocket short choppy steps in the pocket because you don't get to step you don't get to step have a wide base short choppy steps if you have to move in the pocket keeping your eyes downfield and there's your short step no step throw short step no step throws have a good base blue bag drill will help you to have a good base short step no step throws don't climb in the pocket unless you have to heavy back leg heavy back leg stay in the safe spot set with a good base set with a good base set with a good base short step no step throw if Jim took a crow hop right here this ball would not be thrown no crow hops you don't get them you get them in seven on seven you get them in individual workouts you don't get them when you're in the pocket welcome to the NFL short step no step throws keeping a good base there it is. It's become muscle memory for Jim that even when he doesn't have pressure, even when he could take a bigger step, he doesn't. Jim throws the ball this way in seven on seven and it's really something that you have to coach. Bam. Short step, no step throws. I'm just looking at his feet. As Jim sets, he sets with a good base. He doesn't set with a narrow base. He doesn't set with his shoulder so tilted that his ankles are close together and then he has to take a whoom, long step. He sets with a good base. Milliseconds make matter. Wave drill with rushers. This is another way to just keep help the quarterback keep his eyes downfield and condition your other two quarterbacks. They'll rush the quarterback. I'm back here telling them how to rush. They'll rush the quarterback and then the quarterback will have to move up in the pocket or slide or do something keeping his eyes downfield. Keep your eyes downfield, feel these rushes, slide and then throw a ball. Again, work with a good base. Have as heavy a back foot as you possibly can. Have his head, Take a seven step drop. We take seven steps and then this guy's either going to rush up and under or he's going to rush around. He's either going to rush around or rush up and under. And the quarterback has to move accordingly. Right here, we'd rather see Chris step with his back foot first, which he's doing here, work to keep a wide base, work to keep a wide base, and then deliver it. Feeling comfortable with guys rushing around you. Keeping that ball tight to your vest, webbing your backside elbow. Now, as you climb the pocket, 
Remember, there's wide rushers, but there's also three techniques rushing right here. So get out of harm's way, but don't get into harm's way. Heavy back foot, drag that back foot. When you climb the pocket, when you climb the pocket, don't climb the pocket and click your heels. Here Shane can work to keep a wider base, but all we're trying to do is just slide a little bit in the word language we use is find the safe spot in the pocket. Find the safe spot in the pocket. Right here. He gets a little he gets set a little bit too far like that. A little too far like that. And then what's he gotta do? He's gotta click his heels. He's gotta click his heels and then he can then he has to fight to widen his base again. Just different angles. Keep those feet apart, Jim. This is him early on. Keep those feet apart. Okay, again, just sliding in the pocket, finding the safe spot, wave drill with rushers. It's not always perfect. You're not always on perfect balance, but you've got to have confidence to move in the pocket with your eyes downfield and finding the safe spot. Wave drill with rushers, board drill, blue bag drill keeps your feet apart, line drill helps you come to balance, all of these are lower body drills that the quarterback has to have a great deal of confidence throwing the ball from unusual angles and be able to come to balance in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. <laughs> Wave drill with rushers. The guy comes wide. It's not perfect, but it's not perfect, but he gets out of harm's way. He gets out of harm's way of the wide rusher, and then he just doesn't run into these three techniques. Climb the pocket, but just climb it to the safe spot. Don't climb the pocket and then get into trouble. Get out of harm's way, but not back into harm's way, if you will. Okay, wave drill with scrambles. Now, we'll move you twice. Okay, there's nobody rushing right here. I'll just move the quarterback twice as if he's trying to find a safe spot in the pocket and then point. And then whenever we point, you start taking off like you're running to scramble. The only coaching points that we have are when you take off to scramble, I don't think that you'll always keep both hands on the ball. I really don't. It's natural to run without, but the only thing that I'll ask is that whenever you take off or whenever you leave that pocket, you take that right elbow and you web it to your body and you take that football and you bring it right to your numbers. You may pump your left hand. You may pump your left hand if that's off, but you ain't pumping your right hand. You're holding that ball as tight as you can to your numbers and then when you throw the ball on the run, all I'll say is follow your drive. It's the best coaching point you can get. You want to screw somebody up. When they start running, when they start running, start telling them which foot to throw off of, blah, blah, blah. You just got to have confidence to throw the ball and try to follow your drive. The only thing that I say here to Shane is I don't, the quarterback, I'm not talking about, hey, trying to go under, spin out, anything like that. But if you start to run, I think he can pull that ball tighter to his number tighter to the number nine on his chest right there. This is bad by Cade right here, very bad by Cade. Sets with a decent base, but as you start to move and you break contain, as you start to move and you break contain, that ball better get tighter to your number, not further away. Tighter, not further away. Tighter to your number. Not further away. No. You see how that ball leaves his body right there? It's not your ball, it's ours. Pull it tighter to your body, not further away. Jim does a decent job here. It's a semi-scramble. He's caught in between. But what he does is he starts to move is he doesn't start swinging that ball. He doesn't start swinging that ball at all. Shane right here, as you start to move or slide in the pocket, if you take off scrambling, you just can't swing that ball. 
keep it tight, keep it tight. If you start to run, if you start to run, pull that ball tight to your number. Pull it tight to your number. You can pump your left arm, just don't pump your right. Okay, wave drill with quick point. We played 17 games in uh, 2001. 17 games in 2001, and we had 170 passes where the quarterback had to throw the ball from an unusual position. So if you're going to have 10 a game, you might as well go 10 a 10 on those. So right here, the quarterback takes seven steps, and then the coach points them one way or the other way, and then he'll move up or up, okay? So we'll give him two points, we'll give him two points, and then he'll point to the guy. Now, the, res the quarterback start charging towards the line of scrimmage like he's gonna run, and then at the last second, the last second, throw it. Boom, could go to either guy. We practice throwing the ball from unusual positions. If you're gonna have 170 of them in a year, if you're gonna have 170 passes where your quarterback's not gonna be set, where he's going to be in a really bad position, you might as well practice throwing them. There's nothing real good about how they're working the pocket here. That's a good base right there. Is he sliding? That's a good base. And as you start to take off, you have to have confidence in throwing these balls. And it becomes a challenge for guys. If you throw 2,000 of these in the off season, they'll take a great deal of pride in completing balls when they're kind of all off balance and catawampus. They really will. Okay, again, job justification. Okay, Jim will slide a little bit in the pocket, find a safe spot. He may be off balance. He may be whatever. I'm just saying, this type of throw, there's nothing real good about it. He could have sat right in the spot that he did, but he felt a wave drill with Rusher coming around the edge. He also felt this guy coming up. He's about to take off running and then he sees the back. It's going to happen. It's going to happen a lot in a game. So you might as well be real confident in throwing them. You might as well be real confident in throwing them. It's going to happen a lot in a game. You're going to have guys from all over the place. You start to take off. You're about to run. You're about to run. Boom. And all of a sudden you deliver it. They actually gave us the first down on this play. Your quarterback, you drop back, you go through your read, one to two, you're about to run, you're about to run, and all of a sudden the back pops open, you deliver it. There's nothing good about throwing the ball from this position other than realistically, it happens. And realistically, our quarterback has made that throw 7,000 times in the offseason and has a great deal of confidence doing it. He goes through his read, one to two, to three. He's about to start running, bam, the guy pops open. It just happens more than you think. And to, to be able to hold the quarterback accountable on it because we practice it so much is a really good thing, is a really good thing. Right here, a quarterback may take off running. But at the last second, he may see the back pop open. Deliver it with confidence. Deliver it with confidence. Take off, about to run. Well, there he is. Give him a nice, the other thing is you develop a little bit of touch for this sucker. You develop a little bit of touch. It's easy to say to guys, why didn't you just hit him? But then all of a sudden he throws a BB right at his face mask. This is a pretty good pass. There's wave drill with the quick point right there. Job justification. Good picture. He's about to run. Whoa. Okay, circle drill. Okay, this is to keep a good base. Don't look at this right here because this guy's got a too much, he doesn't look good. But, but for the drill's sake, there's five to six guys surrounding him. Each one has a number. The, quarter, the quarterback in the middle say one, two, three, 
four, five, and then they'll holler out, bam, as this guy's bouncing, they'll holler one, and they'll throw the ball to one. This guy yells two, and he pops and throws the ball to two. The next guy will yell three, and he'll pop and throw the ball to three. This isn't a great picture right here of how that guy's do, have how to do the drill. We'll see some better pictures, but this shows you how it's lined up anyhow, how it's lined up anyhow. Okay, now here's a better picture of the quarterback. We always talk about having a good base, so assume a good posture right here. Assume a good posture and even get a base a little wider than you think might be comfortable. A little wider than you think might be comfortable. And it does a lot of things. One, this helps your short step, no step throws. Okay? This helps you keep a good center of gravity in that you have your shoulders over your feet and your feet over your shoulders. In an instant, right here, in an instant right here, Jim's able to come to balance without much vertical bounce. Watch how he gets his feet off the ground here, but he's in a hurry to get him right back on. So lower body, he's in a great position right there. In an instant, he came to balance with a low center of gravity. So lower body, he's got a good base, and he's short step, no step, and throw. Muscle memory from all the drills that we've been doing. Now, upper body, we're going to start talking about that a little bit as well. Bam, the ball comes straight out. You're in a hurry to get rid of this ball. Comes straight out. To have a tight circle now, we're starting to talk some upper body. To have a tight circle, you can't drop the ball down at all. The first thing that happens with the ball is that it must go up. It must go up. Don't drop it down. Don't lead with your elbow. If the ball drops down and your elbow gets in front of the ball, you won't be a very accurate passer. So this drill does a few things. One. It eliminates some vertical bounce because you're conscious of getting your feet back on the ground. Two, it tightens that circle because you want to get that sucker out as fast as humanly possible. As fast as humanly possible. Three, it gives you short step, no step throws. Widen that base, widen that base, widen that base, widen that base. But when they call for it, deliver it. Not so much vertical bounce right here. Widen it, widen it, widen the base. Play with a wider base. Shane should play with a wider base some. Don't bounce, don't spin that much. Don't spin that much. You don't want to get dizzy. Okay, I just do think that at some point in the game, bam, you've got to be able to pop from one side to the other. If your reed's on this side and your outlet's on this side, you better be able to pop with a good base and deliver the ball from unusual angles. Here's a good picture of Shane. He's reading this side, his check down then is over the ball. He's not in a great position, but he's able to reload. Ten times a game, throws like this are going to happen. Be ready to deliver catchable balls. Ten times a game, you're going to be in an unusual position. You're going to pump your feet. You're going to go through a progression of one to two to three. Circle drill helps get your belly facing the target. And the circle drill, get your belly facing the target as fast as you can with as little vertical bounce as you can muster. As little vertical bounce as you can muster, get your belly facing your target. Don't worry about pointing your toe, blah, blah. Get your belly to your target. Deliver the ball as fast as humanly possible with as little vertical bounce as possible. That's the drill. Jim's reading here into this area. Not much vertical bounce. Okay, rapid fire drill. Now, this is the number one drill that we'll do for accuracy, and this is the number one drill that you can do to tighten somebody's circle, okay? Now, remember, the circle is from right here, if you're holding the ball right there, if you're holding the ball right there, the first thing that you want as the quarterback is for that ball to go up in the air, up in the air. You don't ever want to drop the ball down and then lead with your elbow. The smaller and tighter that circle can be, 
the more repetitive it will become. The more repetitive it will become, the more accurate you will be. The more repetitive your golf swing is, the more accurate your golf shot is. Same theory. So it's not for arm speed, it's not for velocity or anything. This is an accuracy drill. It's not to hasten or quicken your release, it's to tighten your circle. It does all those things, but it tightens your circle. I'll have eight balls. Okay, you assume a good position, get a good base, and your belly facing your target about 12 yards away. Your belly facing your target about 12 yards away. There won't be much else in this drill that's very good other than the circle being semi-tight. The only thing I know is that when I'm tossing that ball right there, when I'm tossing that ball right to your right peck, the next one's coming, so you can't, you can't drop down. You can't drop down. We like to say, have a tight upper body. Keep everything tight. Keep that circle tight. So sometimes, I'll fake tossing it. If I fake tossing it, you can't let your arms drop. You want to maintain that tight upper body posture, tight upper body posture, so you can deliver the ball. Now, Jim right here, this is early, early in his career. He's got a good base. So you're doing short step, no step throws. You've got no vertical bounce, obviously, in this drill. There's not going to be much pretty in this, except for that ball's going straight up every single time. Don't worry about how it looks. Don't worry, don't think that you're teaching bad mechanics or anything, something screwed up. You're not. You're teaching that ball to go straight up in the air in an instant, in an instant, in an instant. This is to get a repetitive motion of all things. The repetitive motion is that that ball goes straight up, goes straight up. Now, don't, under, don't undersell the accuracy of this drill, okay? You want the guys to still complete the ball. Every drill that you do, talk about completions. Talk about completions, because it's all moot if the ball is incomplete. These guys have to have a great deal of confidence completing the ball from unusual positions. This one, I'm just going to let it run. Shane's got a great base right here. Here's how you want to do this drill. This is regular speed. It's not fast. Here it is. That's the drill. That's the drill right there. To put it into play, sometimes the ball has to come out super quick, super quick. If you don't have a tight circle, bam, it won't. Watch Jimmy right here. He's got a great base. He short step, no step throws, but that ball always goes straight up with him, straight up with him. If it goes down at all, if his release is any slower, if he's any less accurate right here, it's incomplete. It's incomplete. Straight up with the ball. Straight up with the ball a repetitive motion. He's got a great deal of confidence throwing this ball from unusual positions with guys breathing all over him. Ten times a game this happens, that you're all catawampus whenever you throw it. So you might as well be 10 of 10. We will call swings and nows. Here's a picture of, you can't throw a swing or a now or this bubble screen if you have a big circle. You can't do it. You have to have a tight circle to do it. You have to have a tight circle to do it. We'll talk about footwork for this particular pass and everything. But this tight circle, remember, is for 90% it develops accuracy. Does it tighten your circle and quicken your release? Yeah, it does do that. But what we're selling here is a repetitive motion where the ball starts straight up, where the ball starts straight up, and you are therefore an accurate passer because your motion is repetitive. The ball starts straight up with Jimmy. Starts straight up with the ball. Straight up, straight up. The ball comes up doesn't lead with his elbow. He doesn't drop the ball down. Again, the ball starts up. It starts up. It's a tight circle. It's a tight circle and the ball starts up. It starts up. Short step, no steps. As long as that ball starts up, you'll be accurate.
Come to balance. Short step, no step throws. Short step, no step throws. He ends up pumping the ball and reloading, but his upper body still stays tight. As long as he still stays tight, he'll put it where he wants to. Okay, the clap drill. Okay, this drill is a get it out of your hand drill. It's a little bit like the line drill. It's a little bit like the line drill, but the quarterback wants to be taking a seven step drop. A seven step drop, and then you may set guys up like they're running shallow routes or sometimes backs on wides in different places. But again, the quarterback doesn't want to anticipate being hot, but he wants to react to it. So the coach is sitting right here, and when he claps the ball in points, throw it. If he doesn't clap, you're taking a seven step drop, popping your feet and throwing it. Don't anticipate being hot. Don't anticipate being hot, but react to it. So right here, the quarterback then, the coach ends up clapping his hands, clapping his hands, and Jim's taking a seven step drop, and as soon as he claps, screw everything, the ball's coming out of my hand. We tell the quarterback on this particular drill, to try to put your foot in the ground, try to put your foot in the ground and deliver it. Not to take it drawing the charge or falling backwards. Try to change your momentum and deliver this ball. Your quarterback has to be taking a seven step drop and react to it. If the clap comes on the seventh step, so be it. We don't have hots, we don't have sight adjusts. The quarterback's the guy who has to be in charge of when to throw it or not throw it. When the clap comes, don't elongate your steps, hasten them. Brrr. As fast as you can get that left foot back on the ground, get that left foot back on the ground. How fast can that left foot be on the ground? How fast can that left foot be back on the ground and the ball be gone? Good picture of Jim right here. Drop back, seven step drop, bam. You get the clap, the sucker comes out. You get the clap, the sucker comes out. Seven step drop, somehow, some way, put your foot in the ground and deliver it as fast as you can. Talk in terms of getting that left foot on the ground as much as you're talking about putting that right foot, you know, get that foot on the ground. We'd rather see Shane be able to change his momentum more. How fast can he come to balance? A lot of different drills to practice the same thing, coming to balance in a hurry. Coming to balance in a hurry. Not great here if he has two feet off the ground, but this happens, this happens. He's in a hurry and he comes to balance. We also do this from the shotgun. From the shotgun, don't complain, don't explain. Don't find the laces if you don't have time to find the laces. May get a bad snap, a high ball, come to balance, get that left foot on the ground. May get a bad snap, a low ball, come to balance and get that ball out. Okay, we also do what this drill is called the get it out of your hand drill. Don't complain, don't explain, just get it out of your hand. Now, the quarterback's dropping back and there's guys rushing him. Okay, it's a drill that he can work his cadence. The other quarterbacks all take their helmets off so he doesn't pound his hand or anything. And you'll set guys up like there's a shallow route or a back on a wide, and everybody just start rushing. Don't talk, don't, you just gotta have the comfort level of, I can't put my foot in the ground here, but I've got to throw this ball. I've got to throw this ball. I can't get sacked. Say I'm in the red zone right here. He can work the cadence to try to draw him off sides. The other guys don't make it easy on him. Here, he's working the cadence a little bit. They may zone drop. You could have two to three guys in different areas. Find a way to get it. Try to tip the ball. Try to screw him. Try to do different things. Make it hard for him. We often do a better job than this of trying to harass him. But put your hands up and try to tip the ball. On this, it's like the clap drill, but the quarterback can't put his hand in the ground. They may rush, they may not rush. These guys, one of them could drop out in a zone blitz. Could drop out in a zone blitz. But we're trying to make it as hard for the quarterback as we can, where he has a great deal of confidence throwing the ball like this, maybe. Because he may have to. 
Don't be afraid to work the cadence. If a guy comes unblocked right up the middle, it's not licensed to take a sack. We've practiced throwing the ball like that. We've practiced throwing the ball. Right here, Shane's about to rush. He fires own drops. Find a way. If you've got to throw the ball away, you've got to throw it away. Nothing pretty about this. Just get it out of your hand. Does it happen? Yeah. Happens a lot more than you think. A lot more than you think. Rushers coming. Don't complain about them coming untouched. Should we have this blocked right here? Yeah. We should have this blocked. I think the back went the wrong way. Just get rid of the ball. If guys come untouched and you're hot, don't complain about not being able to get rid of the ball. You've practiced it a million times. They're coming right up in the A-gaps right there, untouched, get rid of it. Coming right up in the A-gap, untouched right here, get rid of it. Make it a big play, don't make it a small play. Whether you can put your foot in the ground or not, whether it's a clap drill or not, get rid of it. Right here, our back went the wrong way. We leave a three technique completely unblocked right here. We leave a three technique completely unblocked right here. Don't complain, just deliver the ball. Jim's thrown this pass a hundred times before. It happens. I wish it didn't. We should have this guy blocked. Our back should block the linebacker and the lineman should block the three technique. Actually, in this picture, the lineman's right in blocking the A-gap and the back should chop that three technique on a heavy call. The back went the wrong way. We end up fumbling the ball, but nonetheless, this is a great picture of <coughs> the quarterback getting rid of it. Don't complain, don't explain, get the ball out of your hand. You're not allowed to get sacked. Hey, he's blitzing right up the A-gap, untouched. Yeah? There's a guy open, throw it. The best way to avoid getting sacked is to throw the football, not to block eight guys. If he's coming untouched, that's his guy in this protection. This is scat protection. He's got him. Right here. Shane shouldn't throw the ball like this because he's picked up. But for some reason, he felt this guy coming untouched. Our center actually pops out and does pick him up. But he felt pressure. Bam, get it out of your hand. Guys untouched, get rid of the ball. Get rid of the ball. Okay? So that's it really for our tape. And remember the four things that we talk about. The four things that we coach. Okay? Upper body, we coach a tight circle and arm speed. Arm speed comes natural. The more you throw, the more you'll develop arm speed. Tight circle, often that can come natural too. But things like the circle drill or rapid fire can really help to get that circle a lot tighter. Get the ball out of your hand drill, it gets tighter. The clap drill, it gets tighter. Drills where the quarterback doesn't know that you're making him tighten his circle, you're just telling him to get the ball, get the ball out of your hand in an instant, helps tighten his circle. Lower body, no vertical bounce, no vertical bounce. All of our footwork drills help that. And short step, no step throws. There's the four things that we talk about. I believe that if you talk about much more than that, you risk making the quarterback robotic.